Hey guys, we're going to do standard picks up, pickups, I believe. Um, where's standard? <laughs> I guess this is standard. And standard is very interesting because I'm only picking up one type of card. And I'm picking up a lot of them. The last time I really felt disconfident about a card was her name was Philia. And to a lesser extent, Malera. And both cards, both of those cards have quadrupled. Malera has by 10, a thousand percent, and then Falia has gone up by 425 percent, maybe a little bit more. So I'll show you the card I'm talking about. And there's in standard, extremely easy to trade for. So I did get my playset of, this artwork is very good. I like it a lot. So this is the FNM promo. So I went ahead, I won. I Top eighting my FNM is really easy because there's 10 people. So as long as you don't finish in the bottom two, you pretty much make top eight, at least at my f and I'm picking up more part the Water Veil. I do like these because they have some modern playability to them. So I think they're much better than a regular promo. I like this card a lot. Time warping effects are pretty good. I started pick up, picking up these lands now because they tend to be a tiny bit cheaper than they used to be. Definitely man lands if you look at the well, well Wake Manlands, they are extremely expensive. I feel like eventually Oath of the Gatewatch will get there. Now, as for what I'm picking up, I'm picking a lot of Aldrazi's. Mind Shaper, Mind Reshaper is not my favorite one. It's actually my least favorite of them, so I'm not picking up as many of them. I don't, he doesn't see as much legacy or vintage play as the other Aldrazi do. And the fact that Eternal Masters will reduce the price of a lot of cards and it will reduce the price of the format. However, that being said, the Adrazi is one of the cheapest decks you can make in Legacy and still be able to compete at a high level. Reality Smasher, this one I like a little bit more. So in terms of Adrazi I'm picking up, it would probably go Reshaper, number three, Reality Smasher number two, and then the number one speculation, which I'll show you later. It's actually not Oblivion. Uh, after a card gets printed in a deck, a dual deck, or a, in this case, it was Battle for Zendikar-esque deck. I forget what it was, but it was in one of the dual decks, Zendikar versus Adrazi. The prices tank, and they just take forever to recover. It's not worth it. Like Jace AOT, he sees tier two play, and I don't believe he's bad in modern, but his price will net. It's going to take forever to go up, even if he does become extremely, extremely played. And that's true for any dual deck. When I look at all the dual decks, outside of Remand, but Remand's are kind of uncommon, and they didn't really get another reprinting. The prices just tank and they stay low for a very, very long time. It probably doesn't help that there's anthology sets as well. I guess the Visions is the one card that actually is more than the entire dual deck, but that card is probably going to plummet in price soon enough. So we're going to talk about this card. It's one of my favorite speculations. It reminds me a lot of like Philia. And here's what I know about it. I know that it's seeing a ton of play in Vintage, in Legacy, Modern, not, I mean, it's seeing some play in Modern, but it's not like a lot of play. Obviously, it's not Adrazi Winter, again, where everyone plays Adrazi or they lose. I is banned. However, when I looked at Falia, I saw a card that people were playing in Death and Taxes back then as a Tier 2 Legacy deck. And at that time, I was really into Legacy. I had foiled out the Death and Taxes deck, and she was very good and extremely unique. Her power level was just that good, and she fit in a deck. This is the same. It has a home. It has a deck in Vintage. It has a deck in Legacy. It has a home, and it's just insanely powerful in that type of deck. Will that deck get weaker? I don't know. But it is possible that after, let's say, four years, we go back to the Adrazi because they are a very popular tribe. Or we go to some colorless. I'm sure that this is not the only time we're going to see 
this weird diamond shape because it's going to be everywhere. I like it. I like it. Uh, whenever I've always held this to be true. If it sees play in vintage, it's probably good enough to see play in legacy. It's probably good enough to see play in modern and probably good enough to see some play in standard. And I don't really care about the standard part. I only care about the modern legacy. And in this case, this card actually sees play in vintage because that's the most unique element of a card. You don't see that often in standard. You don't see cards to that power level. When Abrupt Decay came out, I knew it. I was like, oh man, this card is really good because it was seeing play in Legacy. The same with this card. The, the card, the deck is extremely cheap to make. It, you can build all the pieces, you can trade into them. I'm going to try to pick up as many of these as possible. And once it rotates out, I'll just go on a buying spree because I this power level reminds me a lot of Falia. It sees the it sees more play than Falia did when she first came out in the Eternal formats. And that's what caught my attention was our card in standard being played more in Vintage and Legacy than it is in Standard. That's interesting. You know, that gets me, um, that's intriguing to me. So I'm going to, this is all I have. Maybe I have a few more in decks, probably four more in decks. I want to collect these and they are my new Falia and they're extremely easy to get right now. And there's plenty of, uh, and also ease of, you know, whether or not someone has them and will trade it to you is very relevant when you want to make a large collection of them. Falia, no one liked her, no one wanted her, and I was able to collect a ton of her at $2 in trade and then $2 in TCG player. This guy's going to fall a little bit. I don't know where he's going to end up. Maybe $6, $5, it could even be $4. But he's going to be a $10 plus dollar card. He's going to be a $15 plus dollar card. It's just that good because there's demand from older formats and that's what I primarily look at when I want to make um, want, want to go in on a card is is it strong enough does the power I don't really care it does it have a deck right now and it's nice that it has one but does it do something in a eternal format which is powerful enough to warrant its play and if the answer is yes it's interesting to me so that is probably my speculation in standard for a while. Anyway, bye guys.